this is all incredible drama. It's like reality TV, but it's better because it's real. It's a true crime cliffhanger. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, man. He's been killed. He's, he's been killed, man. The viral video seen by millions around the world. You were one of America's favorite villains. Yeah, I'm positive, like 5,000 percent sure. Did this young wife hatch a murder plot? She's wondering how everybody in the world thinks that she's guilty of this crime. Tonight, a new twist. The evidence that supports me is, is conveniently missing. Here's Dennis Murphy with a Dateline exclusive, The Sting. What started as a tentative police sting operation <laughs> was now being argued in front of a jury in the West Palm Beach, Florida courthouse. 28-year-old Dahlia DiPolito was accused of solicitation to commit murder in the first degree. Conviction could get her up to 30 years in prison. She pleaded not guilty. Lead prosecutor Liz Parker would introduce a trove of evidence, photographs, audio recordings, and videos, including that sting in which Dahlia tells an undercover cop posing as a hitman that she wanted her husband, Mike DiPolito, dead ASAP. I'm positive, like 5,000 it was unreal. It was like something out of a movie. Dahlia had already spent almost two years under house arrest in her mother's home by the time the trial began in April of 2011. They say love is blind. In this case, love was blind, deaf, and dumb. The jury would hear the prosecution argue that the six-month marriage of Michael and Dahlia was a fraud from the beginning. She made him believe that this was an amazing marriage. He never wanted to believe that his wife, the person that he loved more than anything, wanted to have him killed. The prosecutor said Dahlia was juggling two lovers on the side and was trying to enlist each of them in getting her husband bumped off. She's playing all of these guys. They're all thinking they're the one and the only person that she cared about was herself. Detective Alex Moreno read back text messages Dahlia wrote about her husband to her lovers. I really hate him and want to see him rot. Just won my life, W.U., let's get this arrested. To the prosecution, her scheme was apparent. Plant drugs on Michael, tip the cops, and get him busted back to prison on a parole violation. She tries for months to have him arrested. The alleged motive, greed. Prosecutors said she wanted to keep Michael's condo and his money all for herself. But when the schemes didn't work out, argued the prosecution, Dahlia settled on the fatal solution. She'd simply have Michael killed so everything would be hers. She wants to do. The prosecution's case looked airtight with all those mesmerizing tapes of Dahlia plotting out a murder, and also that video from the cop's TV show with her looking unglued as she learned of her husband's murder. What no one could have predicted, though, was Dahlia's defense. We live in a world where people seeking their 15 minutes of fame lose all sense of judgment and common sense. Dahlia's defense attorney, Michael Salnick, said this whole crazy story was in fact all about Dahlia's husband's vanity and his thirst for fame. It was Mike who was really behind the faked murder, its mastermind, just so he could be known beyond Boynton Beach. Mike DiPolito's hoax to orchestrate his own murder to achieve fame and fortune was a bad prank. It was never anyone's intention to harm anyone. The defense argued it was all a TV pitch, Michael auditioning for his big break. The evidence will show that the plot for the contract killing of Mike DiPolito was never real. Mike DiPolito hoped to capture the attention of someone in reality TV. The defense attorney argued that Dahlia was in on the reality show idea the whole time. That scene out front of Dahlia wailing, acting, said the defense. Dahlia knew that Mike wasn't harmed, and hers is a fake reaction to a fake event. The defense pushed Michael DiPolito hard on cross-examination, accusing him of dragging Dahlia down with his stupid idea of being a TV star. This whole reality thing was actually orchestrated by you, wasn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. 
the silliest thing I've ever heard. I mean, uh, completely made up. All right, let's bring in our jury, please. And after two weeks of trial testimony, the jury agreed. We find the defendant guilty of solicitation to commit first-degree murder. In the end, the judge sentenced her to 20 years and gave Dahlia a piece of his mind before sending her behind bars. It was weeks and months that you continued with these different schemes to try to rid yourself of your husband. It was pure evil. But that wasn't the final note in the ballad of Mike and Dahlia. In a move that surprised the prosecution, just three months after sentencing, the judge who called Dahlia pure evil allowed her to post a $500,000 bond. She was released from jail and was again placed under house arrest while she appealed her conviction. Fast forward three years, and Dahlia won her appeal for a new trial. The judge in her first trial failed to properly filter jurors for potential bias and exposure to pretrial publicity. Brian Claypool is one of Dahlia's new lawyers. Some of the jurors said she was guilty in front of the entire jury pool, which contaminated the jury pool. And so, more than seven years after Dahlia DiPolito was charged with hiring a hitman to kill her husband, she would go on trial again. When she heard the news that she had been granted a retrial, she was extremely overjoyed because she felt like she would have a second chance to have the truth be told. She would speak exclusively to Dateline, and oh, what a story she'd tell, this real housewife of Boynton Beach, so much better than reality TV. Now, the season finale of the Dahlia and Michael DiPolito show. More than seven years after Dahlia's outburst went viral, <laughs> and five years after Dahlia was sentenced to 20 years for hiring a hitman to kill her husband, she was back again in court on the same charge, facing a possible 30-year stretch. Good afternoon, Ms. DiPolito. Good afternoon. First, at a pretrial hearing in February, as they tried to get the entire case dismissed, Dahlia's new team road tested a new reality TV defense, version two. This time, Dahlia was blaming her former lover, Mohammed, the informant and sometime TV extra. He had previously been on burn notice and I had some acting experience, and so we were all gonna work on uh, an actor's presentation to put up on social media. Those in-car meetings weren't about arranging a hit, she said. They were all about that TV pitch. The purpose of meeting him was to discuss the presentation and, you know, taping what was going to be on there. She claimed she had wanted to back out of the purported TV project, but she insisted Mohammed was having none of that. And at that point, he lifted his shirt and showed me his gun. And he threatened me, he threatened to hurt me, he threatened to hurt my family. Mohammed, the informant, denies threatening her or participating in a reality TV production. The reality TV defense seems to play into this whole story. Palm Beach Post senior editor Jan Tuckwood says Dahlia's defense was weirdly appropriate. It just seems to make total sense because the whole story doesn't make sense. So you just throw in that angle. I want to be famous. So let's do this stunt. If it was a stunt, it just adds to the weirdness. The story didn't fly with the new judge and the motion to dismiss was thrown out. And so just last week, Dahlia showed up at the Palm Beach County Courthouse once again. New trial, new jury. And Dahlia's defense team, led by Brian Claypool, had come up with a new story, too, version three. I knew that the defense in this case was not going to be centered on a reality show. It was going to be centered on something much bigger than Dahlia. All right, counsel, you may be seated. And as he set out to prove that to the jury, he and his team would have a few surprises up their sleeves. We're going to have the opening statements by the attorneys. While Prosecutor Craig Williams' version of the 2009 events was the same as ever, though a skeleton of the full story. It is based 100% on Mr. Bolino's words, her actions, and her intent. 100%. We have it all on tape, he said. Dahlia hiring a hitman to kill her husband. For 4700 bucks. She wanted two bullets put in her husband's head for nothing. Then it was Dahlia's turn, with the defense presented by Los Angeles attorney Claypool, saying police didn't do their job. There's an issue of domestic abuse. This time the story was that Dahlia was a victim of domestic abuse.
The defense pointed out that when Dahlia's lover first told police she was looking for a hitman, he also told them Michael was abusing her. Dahlia's defense team said that instead of helping her, the police used her, entrapping her in a reality TV production for their 15 minutes of fame on the cops' TV show. You can't break the rules and then be rewarded by breaking the rules, and that's really what this case is about. Everybody is entitled to a, to a police investigation that has integrity. This never really was a credible police investigation. Rather, Dahlia DiPolito was used as a pawn by the Boynton Beach Police Department to manufacture good TV for the cops TV show. Dahlia's defense attorney said Boynton Beach Police undermined its own investigation when the public information officer had the video posted online. Within several hours, of uh, video footage by cops and Boynton Beach PD, you, you went over back to the police department and you posted this on YouTube, correct? Correct. And you knew at that time that there was a pending criminal investigation of Dahlia DiPolito, correct? Correct. Then the officer who first told Dahlia her husband was dead was called as a defense witness. The former sergeant testified that he was unhappy that the cameras got invited in to the ongoing case. It was the goal of an investigation is to solve a crime. That's correct. It's not to make a TV show. No. In the end, Dahlia's team contended Boynton Beach PD had violated Dahlia's constitutional rights. Jurors, they said, look at the motives of the men running the surveillance video and find their target, Dahlia, not guilty. This was a police department in love with publicity. And by virtue of that, they tossed Dahlia DiPolito under the bus. A police department can't toss a client's constitutional rights under the bus to make good television. And if the jury can see this case from the standpoint of holding police departments across the country accountable for following the rules, then we have a shot in getting an acquittal in this case. The defense rested, and Dahlia waited for a jury of six to decide her fate. Meanwhile, Dahlia, flanked by her attorneys looming large, spoke exclusively to Dateline. For the past seven years, I mean, this has been a complete nightmare. She told us her nightmare began as the victim of domestic abuse, an accusation her now ex-husband Michael strongly denies. Was it psychological, Dahlia, or hands-on, or what was the nature of it? It was psychological, it was emotional, it was physical. And Dahlia echoed her lawyer's arguments. We're here because they turned what should have been a complaint and, and getting me help and, you know, questioning me and stuff into this big production for a cop's, you know, TV show deadline that they had. And they just started manufacturing all of these things and creating these scenarios and, and putting me in these situations that, that look horrible. The police say they did not ignore a domestic abuse case. They were trying to stop a murder for hire plot. And those cops TV cameras didn't change the substance of their investigation. Did you want to have your husband, Mike, dead? No. Were you soliciting his, his murder as no, you were absolutely. charged within no. this courthouse? No. Dahlia didn't explain why she went to the gym at the time of the supposed hit. And her lawyers jumped in when we asked her to explain her previous defense, that she was participating in a reality TV show. You talked under testimony about those things, and it was all this cockamamie reality show that was in your head. You can't comment on the reality show. Are you saying that that's that, are you saying that's not the case anymore? What? So what do we how do we understand what we're hearing in that car? Well, she was she was in a compromised state of mind. So we're we're not talking about a, a very stable woman at this point in time, and that came out in this case. And yet you've got some bad facts going on in that car, let's face it. Yeah, I'm positive, like five thousand percent sure. 5,000%, if you could take words back, I'm sure you'd take those back in a heartbeat. The problem is, is that no one is seeing what took place before that. And, and so it's always going to be, you know, a he said, she said, and, and it shouldn't be that way. There should be all the evidence. And, and that's the problem. The evidence that supports me is, is conveniently missing or not collected, uh, you know, and, and, and we know it was destroyed. The police say no evidence was destroyed, but some of Dahlia's phone calls and at least one meeting were not recorded. The prosecution says that doesn't change its case against Dahlia. As she waited for the jury's verdict, Dahlia hoped the dark forces she claimed got her into this mess would be balanced by the forces of good. Dahlia is a very spiritual person, and we've had a lot of spirituality during this case, and we're trusting in God right now. We're praying about it.
And after nearly 10 hours of deliberation, her prayers were answered, in part. To the judge, we, the jury, after further deliberation, still cannot reach a unanimous verdict. The jury was split down the middle, and the judge was forced to declare a mistrial. All the praise and glory in this case goes to God. I can count on one finger the number of people in this country who felt we even had a chance in this case. Meanwhile, after seven years of living the story, Mike DiPolito was glued to the TV. I'll be honest, I was watching and I'm like, what? And I'm thinking to myself, what do these people need to see? You know, she's on video saying she wants to have me kill the two different people, one being a police officer. But he is strangely philosophical about the bare bones prosecution. Do you think they did anything wrong with how they presented it? I don't think they did anything wrong. I just think maybe they should have showed more stuff. Instead, he thinks, the jury was distracted by the defense team's hocus pocus. And what can you do, he says, when Dahlia's stories changed and changed? So what I'm saying to you is, everybody in the world, sad to say, she's basically beat the legal system twice now. Do you think she should do a hard time? Honest answer, I'd like to see her go and taste it. But you don't seem vindictive about it all. Is it like a long time ago now, Michael? A long time ago, and, and me being vindictive, what's that do for me? Honestly, it gets me nowhere. So for now, Dahlia can go home, again under house arrest, to her new baby boy, the father not publicly known. If she was hoping the lack of a verdict would open the door to a plea deal, that looks unlikely. The state intends to retry her case for the third time. They want round three, then bring it on. And so Dahlia awaits her next day in court. And the Dahlia and Michael show may be renewed for another season in prime time. That's all for now. I'm Lester Holt. Thanks for joining us.